The whole idea of Glover is that it allows you to connect your movements to music, and we call that process mapping. In this video, we're going to go over making some simple mappings so you can get started and make some sounds. For this video, it doesn't matter whether you're using the Mimu gloves, our smartphone app Gliss, the micro bit, or anything else. All of the concepts we're going to cover are exactly the same. Uh, I'm going to be using Ultraleap's Leap Motion Controller, uh, but really everything in this video uh, applies to all of the devices. Uh, we've made specific introductions to each of the devices, and we'll link to those in the description below this video. Similarly, I'm going to be using Ableton Live as music software. It's a popular choice amongst a lot of our users, but um, you can use Glover with a whole range of different music software and hardware, and uh, if there's any tutorials on that, we'll link them in the description as well. So the first thing you're going to want to do in Glover is add your device. So I'm going to go up here where it says devices and hit this plus button and I'm going to add Ultraleap's Leap Motion Controller because that's what I'm using for this tutorial. But um, as I've said, like it really doesn't matter what you're using. So um, this you should be able to follow along. So if you've got your device here, um, you can look down at the device inputs panel and this will tell you uh, what all of the devices inputs are. So um, there's three columns here. The first column are all the devices. Now I've only got one device, so but if I had multiple devices I could select the one I wanted. So I'm going to select my Leap Motion. The next column is the kind of groups of inputs. So these are the different groups. There's the flex of the fingers, there's the uh, drum hits, there's gestures and so on and so forth. So what, um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to select the orientation group and here in the third column, we see the specific inputs that we can actually use inside of Glover. So let's go ahead and make our first mapping. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go up here where it says I, and I'm going to add a mapping input, which is what the I stands for. So it says empty mapping input, and it is empty because at the moment we haven't added any controls to it, but this is really where we're going to build our gesture. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to these inputs here, so I've selected leap motion, orientation, and I'm going to drag the roll parameter here into the box, and now I've got uh, roll sitting in there. Now, if I put my hand over the leap motion, you'll see this signal coming in as I move my hand and roll my hand around. Now, that's that's pretty cool, right? So as I move it from left to right, so it's the, or it's the orientation of the hands, right? So I'm, I'm rolling the hand from left to right and back, and you can see the signal. Now, um, one thing I can do is I can actually adjust uh, from this sort of set minimum and set maximum uh, buttons, I can actually set what the range is. So what I can do is I can put my hand over here and then I can navigate down and I can move to the lowest position and then that's going to, I've hit set minimum, you see that's gone to 0 0.2 and I'm going to move all the way to the top uh, point of my hand, I'm going to hit set maximum and now that's set 0 0.8. So now my signal, if you see here, uh, is going all the way from the bottom to the top. So that's kind of setting the range of it. Now the, the output range here is from 0 to 127 and this 127 value has a lot to do with MIDI and um, if you're unsure about it, I wouldn't worry about it for now. I mean, you're going to come across a bit, come across it a bit later. Um, but really this is just, that's the maximum value it's outputting and that's the minimum. So when I'm here it's 0 and when I'm here it's 127. Now what we want to do is to use this signal to control music. So we want to send it to some music software. So to do that, we're going to connect it to a MIDI message. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go up here where it says O, and I'm going to click on that, and that's going to create a mapping output. So it says empty mapping output. What I'm going to do, I'm going to drag this MIDI message, and I'm going to drag it in here, um, and it's got a MIDI message waiting here. Now if you have a look, it says it's a message type control change, it's a, on channel one, and it's controller control change number 20. Now, uh, if these kind of MIDI message things are confusing you, we've made a whole separate video just on the basics of MIDI messages so that you can kind of just get familiar with them and you don't need to worry about it too much. Uh, I promise you it's not too hard and we're really happy to help. So um, go and watch that video if, uh, if this doesn't make sense and then come back. So, what this is doing is is this this uh, mapping output now has a MIDI message in it, which ha which is sending a control change message on channel one, a uh, controller number twenty. So um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to drag from this little area 
to there and now the signal from our, our, our leap motion controller, this roll signal, is now connected and sending this, um, this MIDI message. So if I put my hand over here and I move my hand around, that's now sending out of the software as a MIDI message uh, and it can be picked up by other software. So now we're going to use this message to control something in Ableton Live. So here in Ableton Live, um, we need to actually set some settings first uh, for us to be able to use MIDI mapping. So we only ever need to do this once. And um, yeah, so basically what you need to do is to go up and click on Live and click on Preferences. And where it says Input and Glover, Glover needs to be open for you to see this. Um, you need to make sure that where it says remote, that it's on for the input the input that's Glover. Uh, and if it's not, then you won't be able to do any MIDI mapping and it won't work. The other thing that I suggest you do is where it says takeover mode, um, set that to none. Um, you might have um, another preference if you know what takeover mode does, um, and that's fine. But if you're not sure, you definitely want takeover mode set to none. So, okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here, I'm going to get a sample, it's going to be a, a drum loop, and I'm going to drag it up here. And uh, I'm sending my audio to this music thing. You don't need to do this, this is just so that you can actually hear this in the video. But uh, right, I'm going to play this drum loop. So that's what it sounds like and what we're going to do we're going to add some effects onto this drum loop so the effect I'm going to add so if I go to audio effects here um, then I'm going to get the frequency shifter effect so I'm going to drag this onto this channel here so this frequency shifter is just going to kind of mess up the sound of it so I, I'm going to actually try and we're going to map to this fine parameter so I'm just going to drag this around with the mouse uh, and you can just hear the effect that we're trying to create. So yeah, that's that's sort of what we're going to do. Um, but what we want to do is we want to do that with the um, with the leap motion. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go back to Glover, and we're going to just refresh. We've got our roll parameter here, which which is connected to the leap motion, and that is sending out of Glover as a MIDI message, as a uh, MIDI message, a control change message, channel one, uh, controller number 20. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to Ableton Live, and I'm going to, there's actually a mode here, it says MIDI, and this, is, this allows us to switch into MIDI mapping mode. If I click on it, everything goes blue. If I click it again, it goes back to normal. So when it's, in, when it's blue, um, what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to click on the parameter I want first, and then I'm going to click on MIDI mapping mode. Or sometimes I have to click it here afterwards. So fine, I'll click it now. And you can see these four little squares. So now that's selected. And this is now listening for any MIDI message that we're going to send. So I'm going to put my hand over the leap motion. And you can see there, it's it's recognized our uh, MIDI message on channel one, uh, message 20. So I'm going to go out of MIDI mapping mode. And this is now mapped to the roll of my wrist. So um, yes. What I'm going to do, I'm going to play the loop, and we're going to use this effect with, with the leap motion. Pretty cool. So this is fun, but one of the issues with it is that I'm controlling this parameter all the time. Uh, what I really want to be able to do is to sort of grab it and select it, and then play with that parameter, and then let go again when I'm done. So to do that in Glover, what we're going to do is we're going to add another type of input to our gesture here. So uh, we're going to add a specific type of input called a qualifier. Now, a qualifier is any input that could be true or false. So it could be uh, if you're pressing a button down, like, am I pressing this button down, like true or false? Um, I'm going to use one of the postures on the leap motion. So uh, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to say um, posture pinch. OK, so if I'm making a pinch posture, then the roll signal will send, and if I'm not, then it won't. Um, and by the way, all the qualifiers, they have this kind of teal, uh, kind of greenish color 
So that's how you can sort of tell them apart. So if I put my hand over here and I keep my hand open, nothing happens. But as soon as I make the pinch gesture, you can see the signal starts to send. And then I let go again and it stops. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to play the loop and then I'm going to grab the effect, engage it and I'm going to let go again. So that's pretty cool. Um, and, you know, I think that's, you know, super fun. But um, one of the things that's a bit frustrating is that whenever I let go, this parameter stays down wherever I left it. And what I'd really like to do is that when I let go of it, it sort of flips back to back to zero here because so that I've kind of let go of the effect and it's not affected anymore. So let's have a look at how we can do that. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to go down to this feature here called reset on release. So I'm going to turn that on. And what that does is whenever I let go of my pinch posture or if I was making pressing a button or whatever it was, whenever I let go of that thing, it will go back to this value. Now, it just so happens that our fine parameter here is in the middle of the range, right? So this goes from minus 500 to 500 and then in it wants to sit in the middle. Now, in MIDI terms, the middle is halfway between zero and one, two, seven. So it just so happens that the right value to use here is halfway between those numbers, which is 64. I mean, technically it's 63.5, but um, in, we can only put round numbers when it comes to MIDI. So I'm setting this recent on release to 64. Uh, and now we're going to go back to Ableton and we're going to see, uh, us, we can kind of engage the effect and let go again and it should reset. So I'm going to play the loop. Just see it snaps back there. And again, it snaps back to the beginning. So that's pretty useful, and, and it means that we can engage an effect, uh, play with it, and then just let go, and it can go back to how it was before we even started playing with it. So now we're going to add a second effect on this drum loop. We're going to add a beat repeat effect. To add the beat repeat effect, we're going to go up here and we go to audio effects and we're going to choose beat repeat. I'm going to drag it down and put it just before the frequency shifter. So a couple of things, we're going to set chance to zero so we don't want this to come on by chance. And I'm going to change it from mix so where it includes the um, original signal to insert where it just replaces it instead. So um, I'm just going to play the drum loop. I'm going to show you what this does. It basically captures a bit of the the sound and then it will repeat it. So I'm going to now engage it here. So that, that's basically what we're going to be doing. We're going to find a way to grab the sound and kind of hold it and then, and then let go, get go of it again. So let's now try and control this from Glover. So back here in Glover, what we need to do is we're going to add a second input. So I'm going to go here. And here, I'm going to, in my leap motion, I'm going to go to get the posture fist. So whenever I make a fist, it's going to grab that sound. And then um, what I want to do is let go and for it to release it. So I'm going to hit O to create a second output. And I'm going to drag another MIDI message. Now you'll see this one's uh, channel one message 21. Now, Glover does its best to kind of... Uh, in, increase these numbers and, and it, the reason it starts from 20 uh, is it tries to avoid some uh, MIDI messages which have predefined roles so you might see this skip a few as well um, in the end like you're probably best to try and do your best to try and work out which ones you've used and be careful not to reuse uh, things if you're using them for something else um, okay so I'm going to connect these together and I could go and map this to, to Ableton Live, but the problem is I've got two MIDI messages sending. So when Ableton starts listening, how will it know to listen for the what for the fist, which is going to control the beat repeat, instead of this like roll and pinch thing, right? So the answer to that is that it can't because we're sending both at once. So we need to be more specific. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to solo this. I'm going to hit solo. And now only this message is going to send. So now when I go into um, Ableton Live, 
and I go into MIDI mapping mode. Now I can, in MIDI mapping mode, I can click this button up here, but I can also do Command M. So that I'm now in MIDI mapping mode, and I'm going to hit the beat repeat uh, button here, and I'm going to make a fist with my hand, and you see that now is recognized. It says 121 there, and now I'm going to come away and come out of MIDI mapping mode with the shortcut. So this is now um, mapped my fist control to the to the beat repeat. So let's see what happens. So I'm going to press play on the drum loop and let's see. So you see that we, we engage the effect, but annoyingly, like we can't let go of it yet. And that's because we haven't set up Glover correctly to do this. So let's go and have a look. So we're sending this message and it sends, um, if you have a look in here, you'll notice that actually this looks different to our first one with the, with the whole signal and graph. So the, the roll and pinch one is actually what we call a movement because it's, it's dominated by this roll parameter. So it takes some value in this range. The fist, it doesn't really have a value. So it's, it's kind of, it's more of an event, right? See, it says event here. You see, it says movement here. So if you have a look at this event, it's only sending the value 127, which will engage the beat repeat effect. And then it, it never sends anything to turn it off again. So what we actually look at here is there's a thing called mode. It's a thing that says mode and it says trigger. Now, if I hit that, it becomes two, two outputs here, one at the top and one at the bottom. Now you can see it's got the top value and then the alternative value is zero. So what I'm going to do, if I go here and I make a fist, then the top light will go. And then if I do make an, a second fist, then the bottom light will go. So what it's doing is it's alternating between the two, but that's actually not what we want here. What we want to do is we want the effect to engage when we make a fist and then to stop when we let go of making a fist. So that is a third mode here where we hit gate. So now if I uh, make a fist, the top light goes, and as soon as I let go of the fist, the bottom light goes. And that's that's what we want. So we're going to drag now this second connection to here. Um, and now we're going to go and see this uh, and what it does in Ableton Live. So I'm going to play the loop again, and then I'm going to make a fist and grab the effect and let go. I better turn the effect off first. Right, here we go. So pretty cool. So we can now kind of grab that effect and, um, and play with it. So just before we wrap up, there's a couple of things we can do just to tidy up a bit. So we've got two MIDI messages here and they are kind of, it's hard to remember what either one does, right? After a while. So if I click on this one and I go to this box here, I can actually give it a name. So uh, that one is the frequency shifter because that's what it's controlling. And it was actually the um, fine parameter. And then um, this one here was the beat repeat. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to um, give each one of these mappings a color. So I'm going to select these two. I'm going to control click or right click here. I'm going to give this one a nice blue color. Um, and then I'm going to do the same to the other ones, and I'm going to give them a sort of purple color. And I've given them these colors because they, um, you know, they each control a different effect, and I can visually see what controls what in my um, in my um, kind of mappings. So um, the last thing is that what we've created here is we've created a, a collection of mappings, only two mappings, um, but but a collection of mappings, and a collection of mappings in Glover we call a scene. And you can see it says scene one here. So let's just give this a name. So if I click on that box, I'm going to call this a sort of drum loop. This is what we've been doing, I guess, drum loop stuff. So we've got our drum loop scene, we've got our mappings, and they're named. If we come back here, we can remember what they do.